Welcome to Postscript. Here we hope to answer your questions and help you dig deeper into the messages and sermons at FaithBridge by talking with the teacher of the day. Hi and welcome to Postscript. I'm Lou Ann Riley, Grow Group and Discipleship Director, and I'm here with Pastor Dan, who just talked to us today about discipling our children. Welcome, Pastor Dan. Thanks. Glad to have you with us. Um, so uh, we didn't have any questions come in, but I do have some questions um, okay. around the message that I would love to ask. Sure. Um, so I'll just jump right in. In the beginning of your message, you talked about disciplining your children and then segued into discipling your children. Right. What is the difference? How do those relate? Well, um, they are closely related. Uh, Part of discipling your child is administering discipline to your child. Uh, part of being a disciplined person is learning how to be a disciple. But in practical, everyday living, th this is the distinction that I would make. When you disciple your child, you are expressly focused on their growing relationship with Jesus. That's that's the focal point. That's what you're dealing with. When you discipline your child, you're really dealing with all of life. You're mm. teaching them how to behave. You're teaching them that life has consequences, whether you're uh, dealing with behaviors or language or how they use money or whether they stay out too late, mm. uh, you know, w w whatever the case may be. It, it covers a much broader spectrum than discipling, though, as I said, the the two do intersect with each other a lot. Okay, good. Um, so I can't help but think about um, parents who have children who maybe are grown, mm -hmm. um, or maybe d they didn't even become believers themselves until their children were in high school or maybe um, farther, and they think to themselves, boy, I really blew it. Mm -hmm. I didn't follow much of what Dan was saying. Um, and what, what would you say to that? I think the first thing I would say is uh, don't, don't beat yourself up. If, if you have already confessed your shortcomings to the Lord and repented of that, then leave it in the past. You, you can't go back and do anything about it anyway. And so to feel guilty and to beat yourself up is counterproductive in the extreme. Instead, I would uh, begin to orient my prayer life toward asking God for opportunities to dialogue with my adult child about these matters in a gracious sort of way that the child can receive. Uh, I would uh, focus on other children that are in my sphere of influence that I can be a godly influence for. And um, I would uh, to whatever degree I'm able, if grandkids are a part of the picture, uh, exert appropriate mm -hmm. godly influence there as well. Uh, basically, I'm saying, look ahead. Mm -hmm. I, I heard a guy say one time, there's a reason the rear view mirror is this big and the windshield is this big. W yes, is it unfortunate that that happened? Sure but it can't be changed. So let's just look ahead to what we can do in the future. That's good. Um, so as a parent, what are resources that you would recommend to me? Um, my children are younger, but what are things that you turn to as you were learning to disciple your children? Are there books or resources mm -hmm. that you could point us to just practically? Sure. Well, uh, as I mentioned in the message, take advantage of our kids' ministry. It's fantastic. And th those ladies actually could give you much more specific suggestions mm -hmm. than I am able to. So use that. Same for student ministry. Those folks are there to help. But I will tell you the sorts of things that Becky and I did with our kids. Um, we, when they were very small, we used Bible storybooks. Mm -hmm. uh, we actually preached through one here at FaithBridge several years ago. Yeah. The Jesus uh, Storybook Bible. Yeah. Have uh, it at our resource center. Uh, acquaint mm -hmm. your kids with the stories of the Bible. It sticks there. Um, 
make family opportunities for worship a regular part of your life. That doesn't mean you have to preach a sermon. It doesn't have to be super formal or anything. At the end of the day, as you're going to bed, you can talk about where did I see God today and what did God do in my life? Um, the, the thing that Becky and I tried to do was continually orient our children toward God. Uh, whether that was a Bible storybook <clears throat> or having a worship time or sometimes even in the midst of discipline when we were learning a hard life lesson, talking about what does this mean in terms of my relationship with God and how does He feel about me in the midst of all this. Um, those are the sorts of tools that we used and um, we, we were by no means perfect, um, but we did find them to be very helpful. Good. Thank you. Well, I think all of the points, no matter where you are as um, with your children, but also talking when you don't have children, looking for a place that you can sure. invest in the lives of children. Absolutely. So thank you for yeah. that message today. And thank you for joining us here for Postscript. We'll see you back here next week. Thanks for joining us for Postscript. Help us keep the podcast interactive by submitting your questions during the morning services. Learn more at faithbridge.org postscript.